Dan Willis here, and we're talking about how to restore credit. Now, regardless if you go about this doing it yourself or you hire outside help, the most effective way to restore your credit is to take an all-out offensive. We want to focus on building credit. You can do this with responsible use, along with having creating a trail of on-time monthly payments, and that's going to help your amounts owed category worth roughly 30% of your credit score, and then also cleaning up your credit report. In other words, getting rid of those dings, those blemishes, those negative items from your credit report because that's what's causing a bad credit score. And this is going to help your payment history worth roughly 35% of your overall credit score. And if you'd like some help, you can get a free credit consultation by calling toll-free 1-877-418-7596. Now, first, we're going to talk about how to deal with debt collectors, because chances are you're receiving those endless phone calls, those mountain of demanding letters, and chances are you're dealing with some debt collectors. So the first place is the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, the FDCPA. This is federal law. It's the rules and regulations that are supposed to regulate this industry, and yes, it's violated virtually every day. Now, the most common concern for people dealing with debt in collections is will paying it off improve your credit? In short, no. The only thing that happens if you just pay off this debt in collections and do nothing more, the only thing that's going to happen is the change in the status of that collection on your credit report. It's going to go from an unpaid collection to a paid collection. A paid collection is still a negative, damaging, derogatory item that's going to pull your credit score down. Anthony Sprob, a spokesman for FICO, says the collections on your credit report can damage and drag your score down by up to 100 points. That's huge! Now, the first place for every consumer to start dealing with any debt collector is to first request debt validation on your account. This is your consumer right under the FDCPA, and essentially, since you didn't do any business directly with this collection agency, we're saying, hey, debt collector, you first prove this is actually my debt, everything's legit, etc. This is most effective if you do it in writing, send it using certified mail with return receipt requested. That way you'll have evidence that you requested validation and that they received it. You see, they're required to respond within 30 days of receipt by providing you with the paperwork, the documents, and the evidence that actually proves this here. This is your account. That paperwork should show who the original creditors were, the balance, the dates of account activity, all the details about it. If they fail to validate your debt, which is not uncommon, then according to the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, that debt is legally forgiven, as in you're no longer legally responsible for payment. Further, that collection agency is supposed to contact all three of the credit bureaus to have them remove that collection from your credit report. If you'd like some help, you can get a free credit consultation by calling toll-free 1-877-418-7596. Now, this second step is the statute of limitations. This is a state law, and it does vary by state, so for full details, investigate your local listings. But what this law says is how long you're actually legally responsible for repayment, and it's not forever. It governs most types of consumer debt. Generally, it's about seven years, and it covers most types of consumer debt, from medical bills to credit cards to charge-off accounts to auto deficiencies like with a repos. It covers virtually everything, retail, telecommunications, with the few exceptions being defaulted federal student loans and federal income taxes. Beware! One of the dirty, most common debt collection strategies is to re-age consumer accounts for obvious reasons so they can continue to try to collect payment. <laughs> Please investigate the statute of limitations and make sure that your debt is still within that time window before you start looking into making payment. The third step here is negotiating a settlement agreement. You should only enter into negotiations directly with that debt collector after your account has been validated and you've checked the statute of limitations. And with your settlement agreement, it's best to get this in writing, and there's two parts to it. First, always, always, always negotiate to settle your debt for much less than the total balance. Generally, you'll be able to settle for as little as 15%, up to about 45% of the total balance 
it depends on the exact circumstances, but somewhere in that ballpark, you can always negotiate for less. The second part is mission critical. We must get this debt collector to agree that in exchange for our payment, they'll stop reporting our account information to all three of the credit bureaus. Because in the next step, we're going to look at getting that off of your credit report using the credit bureau dispute process. But if you neglect the second part of it, we're going to get slapped with that paid collection, which is going to hurt and pull down our credit score. And if you'd like some help, you can get a free credit consultation by calling toll-free 1-877-418-7596. Now, now let's talk about how to clean up your credit report. And to do this, first, this is looking at your payment history worth roughly 35% of your overall FICO score. And to do this, we're going to use more federal legislation, the FCRA, Fair Credit Reporting Act. This federal legislation is what enables you to dispute and challenge any item on your credit report so long as you believe it's inaccurate, misleading, or made in error. There's three ways to file your credit report dispute. You can do it online, over the phone, or by mail. Once the credit bureaus get your dispute, they first get to decide if it's valid or if it's frivolous. If it's frivolous, they'll request more information. If it's valid, they're required to investigate the item according to the Fair Credit Reporting Act. They'll call it a reinvestigation, as if there was an investigation that took place before it got slapped on your credit report. Nevertheless, during their reinvestigation, they're going to contact the data furnisher, the creditor, the lender, the company that's reporting that information about your account. It's called the data furnisher and credit bureau lingo. Nevertheless, they're going to contact that company and they're going to ask them to verify your account. If your account is verified, then it will remain on your credit report and it can be updated with accurate information. The more likely result, though, is your account won't be verified. And then, in accordance with the Fair Credit Reporting Act, this means the credit bureaus must remove that item from your credit report. This is how to legally clean up those credit report dings, blemishes, and those negative items by exercising your consumer rights. And using our debt collection example here that we just discussed, after you've made that payment and they've agreed to stop reporting your account information to all three of the credit bureaus, once you file your credit bureau dispute and the credit bureaus deem it valid and they reinvestigate the item, they're going to contact that debt collector for verification. As per your settlement agreement with that debt collector, they're not going to verify your account when the credit bureaus investigate, and as such, the credit bureaus will have to remove that collection from your credit report. That's why it's so important to get that agreement from them. If you'd like some help, you can get a free credit consultation by calling toll-free 1-877-418-7596. Now, the big challenge, and where most people just give up, is getting the credit bureaus to deem your dispute valid. They're virtually guaranteed to find it frivolous. Just as an example of how true this is, in 2015, all three of the credit bureaus agreed to settle and pay 31 state attorney generals for allegedly violating the Fair Credit Reporting Act. In 2013, Julie Miller, a lady who woke up to discover 38 collection accounts were on her credit report, bogus collection accounts, she did exactly what she was supposed to, filed her disputes over two years later, they are still telling her it was frivolous. This is the most valid dispute of any disputes, but two years later, they were still telling her it was frivolous. She ended up filing a civil lawsuit and did win. She was awarded over $18 million, which was later reduced to just under $2 million. But both a federal jury and a federal judge found Equifax's behavior just beyond reprehensible. 60 Minutes did a story here in recent years about just how challenging it is for the average American to dispute even the most valid of errors on their credit report. The FTC and the CFPB, Federal Trade Commission, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, both government bodies have repeatedly, and I mean repeatedly, fined all three credit bureaus for allegedly violating the Fair Credit Reporting Act. And the reason is because for the credit bureaus to investigate an error on my credit report or your credit report, it's only an expense. The credit bureau industries earn roughly $4 billion a year, and when they investigate items on any consumer credit reports, it only costs them money. 
This is why the government felt it was so necessary that they pass federal law, the Fair Credit Reporting Act, way back in 1970, requiring the credit bureaus to do this. And those, now doesn't it seem reasonable in those four plus decades since that, 1970, that the credit bureaus, who are for-profit businesses, have invested huge time, money, resources into figuring out at least how to minimize this expense? Of course! And you know what they found over those 40 plus years? The most effective thing for them to do is nothing at all. <laughs> That's why they're virtually guaranteed to find your dispute frivolous and request more information from you. Their goal is for you to just give up and go away. And most people do. <laughs> That's the God's honest truth. You can do this yourself, and if you do, please remain persistent, organized, disciplined, because it's not an easy road. The other alternative is to hire help, and we encourage our members to consider this because there's some really effective, very good firms out there. And of course, we encourage our members to consider professional, legal, and legitimate credit repair firms to help with this. In 2016 alone, over 9 million negative items were removed from consumer credit reports. One of the best firms is the Credit Pros. They've successfully helped their clients remove late payments, charge-offs, collections, judgments, repossessions, foreclosures, even bankruptcy items from their credit reports. If you'd like some help, you can get a free credit, credit consultation by calling toll-free 1-877-418-7596. Again, that's for a free credit consultation. The toll-free phone number is 1-877-418-7596. This is Dan Willis. We're going to include a link in the description below over to an article on our website for the full story. We also have a free report available there, the seven proven ways to boost your credit score. And of course, subscribe and join our congregation. Have a wonderful day and looking forward to talking to you again here soon.